G'day guys and welcome back to another LumaFusion tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to create a simple but awesome intro. And this is something that I uploaded to my Instagram feed for a couple of days ago. Uh, so if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen this already. If you don't follow me, make sure to hit that follow button. That would be really appreciated as well. This video is also sponsored by Epidemic Sound and we're going to talk more about that later in this uh, video. But now let's head over to the iPad and create some uh, intro. <laughs> Now moving over to the iPad and over to LumaFusion, I've already prepared the clips and the audio here on the timeline. The reason for that is that I have a separate video which I made earlier on the audio here on how you can mix the same music and shorten it down by blending the middle point or the beginning point of the audio with the end point. So I'll make sure to leave that down in the description below. But I'm going to run you through the way that I edited this with the music uh, uh, as well here so we're gonna go through the different spikes here so at the beginning you can see that we have a spike but what's really important is that you play through the uh, the audio here so you get the feel of where the spikes are and once you get a feel of where the spikes are you can also use the um, the marker here which is the button right here so if you tap on that you get a marker you don't have to type anything you can just remove the keyboard and that will place a marker right here on the touch bar here if you are playing through the audio here you can simply just do a playback here and then we can tap and tap and tap and tap and tap and this allows you to easily find the different beats in the audio so if you are struggling to find the different beats that you want to cut to you can simply do a playback and you can tap on this uh, marker button when the uh, when the timeline is playing as well uh, let's go to the uh, beginning again here and uh, here we can see that we have the different spikes in the uh, in the audio here so we have one here at the beginning then we have one here closer to the middle so sometimes here it depends on the on the spike here so this spike is fairly big so you have to cut it then in the middle of the spike or at the beginning of the spike uh, the best tip I can give you is to actually cut to the the beat like or find the spikes here and then make cuts with different clips and once you've done that it's really important that you render out the project if you want to be really accurate with the um, the change of clips to the beat and you want to do a pre-render of that before you come any further than what you see on the timeline now because the more things you apply on the timeline the longer the render process will be and the more you will have to change if you have to make some changes so do a basic edit of uh, of your timeline like this then do a pre-render and then see where the different changes needs to be uh, made and if you need to do any changes at all and if you don't then you are good to go and can continue your editing so if you still have a hard time finding the spikes in the audio and getting your clips to match the beat of the music epidemic sound has something called stems this is basically all the layers of music instruments bass melody and drums on epidemic sound you can choose whether to download the entire music mix or each individual stem or all the stems in one zip file. This makes it so much easier to see each different waveform and makes editing and matching clips with audio so much faster. For me, this is a huge game changer and makes it so much easier when I edit my videos. This is also one of the main reasons that I stick with Epidemic Sound for all my videos. Even though the video is sponsored by Epidemic Sound, I'm not obligated to say anything good about their service or music. It just happens to be the best source of music for my needs and I really enjoy the music they provide. They have also updated their sound effects library from 60,000 to 90,000 sound effects. Here you'll find all the sound effects you need for any type of video. And if you want to feel the sound effects, I'll leave three different styles of cinematic videos down in the description below for you to check out if you want to do that. And now back to the video. Now once you have everything in place like we have here on the timeline now, we're going to start by making the square box and this is done by simply adding an overlay and uh, we're going to make sure to put this in the from the beginning of the first clip here and then we're just going to stretch it out 
throughout the timeline and sequence here to the end of the last clip. Now we're going to take this and just nudge one up and we can actually do two here. Uh, depends on how you want to uh, do this later. We can always change the placement of this to make some really cool looking effects as well. And once we placed it where we want it to be, we're going to go into edit on the clip here or the text layer. We're going to delete your text. Then we're going to add a new shape. So what we're going to do now is to take the uh, face color opacity here and take all the way down to zero. And we're going to take the edge color all the way up to 100 and change the color to your desired color. For this, I'm going to go with white. Now the width I want to have uh, around 30. This is what I used in the uh, upload that I did to Instagram as well. And uh, what we can do now is also scale this up a little bit. So you can use two of your fingers just to scale it to your desired uh, position and size. So I think that looks pretty, pretty awesome. So I'm going to keep it like that. And once this is done, the next thing we want to do is uh, to create that effect where we have the blur around the uh, edges of the or the, the clip, which is in, in the background. Uh, what we want to do then is to just multi select all of the different clips here. If you pay attention here, you can see that I have the clip snapping here turned off, which makes it a little bit easier to work on the timeline if you are working with a lot of copy paste and uh, and things like that. So again, I'm just going to do it one more time here. Make sure to just uh, disable all or select all it doesn't really matter. Then copy. I'm going to go to the end here and then paste. So now we have a new sequence with all of the same clips here. Going to multi select all of them and then just place them above on track number two. So now we have two different layers of the same clips here. So for the first clip here, I'm going to go into edit on that and over to uh, frame and fit. And I'm simply going to resize it and make it a little bit smaller. So the blue line, which you see here, uh, sorry. Uh, so the blue line, which you see on the edges here on top and bottom as well, I'm going to make sure those blue lines are centered within the, uh, the white line, which is going around here, the white box. So it looks something like that. Now, once this is done, I can go out of the timeline here and I can copy everything from this layer. So I'm going to copy, then I'm going to multi select everything which is on the track number two, like that. And I'm going to paste just everything except for the colors. Uh, so pasting that will allow you to have all the different clips here in the same position as the first one. Now for the uh, clips on track number one, we're going to go to the first one and we're going to go over to color and effects. And what I'm going to do is to go to the water droplet, which is here, and we're going to add a Gaussian five and take it maybe to something like seven. So now you created that blur effect around the box as well. And you have the video playing at a little bit smaller size here in the middle. Now, if you have a photo like this, you can see that at the uh, bottom here, we have the um, uh, the edges or the, the bottom and top of the image here is outside of the uh, the box. So a easy tip here uh, to remove that is to go over to cropping and then you can crop in the bottom uh, and you can crop in the top as well to make it fit within the white box. So once you've done that, you have a perfect looking image or video depending on the aspect of the video or photo you are importing to your timeline for an intro like this. Now, if we scroll through here now, you can do that as well just to see if everything is lined up perfectly. And once you see that everything is looking good, uh, we can also see that, let's see here, uh, we're going to make sure to copy copy this again. I see that didn't apply to the other clips here. So I'm going to multi select here and then we're going to paste uh, uh, the effects only. So paste and we will now have the same blur effect applied to the remaining clips here as well. Uh, the next thing we're going to do now is to add some text and we're going to add some animations as well. So for the first one here, what I did for the beginning part was to actually just take the plain white uh, uh, title here, the box, and I made a cut to it. And then I made a simple animation at the beginning. So let's go over to the uh, beginning here of the uh, 
first layer here of the uh, the box and uh, over to frame and fit beginning make a keyframe and for this I want to uh, scale it a little bit in here so to something like that and I just want to go a few frames so one two three maybe and uh, let's go four and then I want to take it back to the normal position so now we'll have this this zoom in to the box at the beginning. So let's just do a playback of that and see what it looks like. Now that we added some animation to this, you can see that the image is not following. What you can do now is to just copy the uh, first icon here, copy and then paste it to the top clip here and make sure that the uh, frame and fit icon is selected and paste. Now, as you can see, this is following, but it's a little bit bigger than the box itself. So now that you apply the keyframes here, you can go to the uh, the clip and you can go over to frame and fit. And the first icon here, I'm going to scale this down so it fits inside the uh, box again. Then you're going to go to the last keyframe and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to scale it down so it fits inside the box. Now what you can do is to go frame by frame backwards here to make sure that the image and the blue line is always centered within the white box. If it is, then you don't have to do anything else. Then you're basically done with the animation. So now we have the video also following the box here and we can go on and we can add some text. So we're going to tap on the circle with a plus and add a new overlay title. Make sure that the duration is the same as the clip underneath and the shape above. So once we added this, we can go into edit and we can type our own text here, create. And the font I'm going to use is uh, Avenir Next and Heavy Italic. I'm also going to scale this a little bit up here. And I want to add the same animation to this text as well. So what I'm going to do is to um, go to the clip, which is underneath. And I'm going to go to uh, the clipboard and copy the motion here on the first icon go to the text and paste. So now you can see that we have the text following as so well. Now the text is a little bit small and I want it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go into edit on the text layer itself here and just make the size bigger. So if we take a look at the first part here now, you can see that the text is coming in here as well, following the animation of the image and the video in the middle here and the box itself. So for the next clip here, I am going to duplicate this text layer here and put it above the video or the photo here and just trim the duration so it matches the sequence of the clip here and the duration of the clip and I go into edit. Now I want to go over to frame and fit right away because I don't want these uh, uh, these keyframes and this type of animation. So I'm going to go to the end or, or, or the last keyframe and then just delete all keyframes. Now once this is done, um, let's go over and change the uh, text here to without. And for this, I want to have it as a text in the background here and also in the, the front. So I don't, I want this to be two separate uh, um, layers. So one uh, which is uh, filling the screen, but it's not uh, interacting with the image in the middle. So let's just keep this as it is right now and just take this to the side and duplicate the next one and place above and go into edit on this. And what I'm going to do here now is to just take the center Y and just pull it up and then duplicate it. And I'm going to pull it down underneath and then we're going to duplicate it again. And something like that. And then one more time. So we have four or five, depending on how many you want and need. So that looks great. The next thing is to move over to frame and fit. And we're actually going to just scale these up now. And uh, I'm going to pull it a little bit down. And I'm also going to pull it a little bit to the left. And make sure that we are at the beginning here. And we're going to make a keyframe. I'm going to go to the end. And I'm going to take the position X here and just pull back to zero. So now we have some tiny movement to the text here as well. You can also make this faster if you want to do that. It's all up to you how you want to play around with it. 
So to pull off the effect where this is behind the image here, what I'm going to do now is to go to the end and make a cut here. So I have the same duration on the box as well. And then I'm going to drag everything up one layer until I have space between the top clip and the bottom clip here. Then I'm going to take the without text and place in between these two. And you can now see that the text is behind the um, square and the image, which is in the middle here. Now I'm going to take the shape here and pull down and I'm going to take the without text and pull on top. So now we have the without in the middle and we have the without in the background here, uh, which is looking quite good. And I want to add some additional spice to the text in the background here. So I'm going to go into edit on that and over to frame and fit blending. And let's go with the overlay for that look. So now we have something that looks like this. We have the uh, background text blending with the uh, image as well. And I also want to add some animation to the text in the front here. So let's go over to edit on that, over to frame and fit, make a keyframe at the beginning. And this time I want it to be a little bit bigger, something like that, maybe like that. Go to the end and then we're gonna scale it down a tiny bit here. So now that we added the animation to the without as well, we have two parts of the sequence now, which is finished. Now for the next one here, we can also do sort of the same. So let's go over and just duplicate the without here and place that on top of the second layer. And we have a really awesome look already. So for this one, uh, I don't want it to, to go from the left to right. I want it to go slightly from top to bottom. So I'm going to go to the beginning here and just delete all the keyframes. And we can also center this and just scale it up a little bit and place it a little bit different like that. Make a keyframe, go to the end. And then we're going to take the position Y here and pull a little bit further down. So now we have an effect which is looking like this. Now we can also create some nice looking effect to this as well by simply trimming the end here and we can take the without text and pull above and we can take the, sh uh, the top layer of the video here and pull up and we can take the shape and pull down. So now we have the shape here a little bit more visible and you can also see that we have the blur around the box and not inside the box. So by changing the placement of the different layers when you are creating your um, videos can really make you add some different spices and looks to your video as well. And by doing that, you can achieve some pretty awesome stuff. Now, I'm not going to go through the entire process here because it's basically just adding text after text after text. So here you have the three uh, different styles of texts which I've added to this intro as well. And the, the next one is uh, basically filmmaking uh, made easy and then Rob HK uh, tutorials here at the end. End. Now I'll be sure to leave all the videos for mixing uh, music down in the description below just in case you want to check those out as well. So there you have another intro to make in the Luma Fusion. I really hope that you enjoyed this video as well. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed already, that would be really appreciated. Follow me on Instagram and that's gonna be the end of today's video. So I catch you in the next one.